Welcome to Focus on Suppliers. I'm Blake Woolsey. And I'm Jared Davis. And our show, we're going to be talking about packaging. I mean, who knew <laughs> packaging was such a star of the show on the shelf these days? Well, it's such an essential part to all the merchandising, to saving labor dollars, and then marketing at that last minute decision right there when the shopper approaches the shelf. Right. Ryan Schemmel of French's, he is sharing with us about how they're marrying and packaging mustard and ketchup together, which is something new for them. <laughs> well, I got a new experience this week, too, because Carrie Bailey invited me to Menasha to visit the reveal room. This is like Santa Claus's oh, workshop, everything wow. that's kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> it's great. But we get a first hand look at retail ready packaging and some of those marketing tactics for suppliers to use on their packaging. And Colby B. Lind is with us again to give us an update on OTIF. Everybody's very curious about this and where we are sort of in the process and the status check in. And then our friend Don Harris is talking about the American Diabetes Association today as well. Focus, Focus on, on suppliers, suppliers starts, starts now. <laughs> Focus on Suppliers, brought to you by 8th and Walton, where suppliers learn fast and grow, and sponsored in part by Saatchi and Saatchi X, Case Stack, Mitchell Communications Group, and other outstanding companies. We have an opportunity today to welcome back Ryan Schemmel of French's. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me again. We want to highlight as we're talking about packaging, what are some like three things we need to think about when you are looking at repackaging or packaging some items together? So um, if you were to take a, a banded pack, you know, like the one that we're looking at here, um, you first need to think about the shopper, right? What does the shopper actually want to buy together that makes sense? So clearly something like ketchup and mustard uh, go together pretty well, um, and that's very shopper relevant. Um, you need to think about the, the value for the shopper as well. So there has to be a, you know, a, a price uh, value there that um, will you know, encourage them to, to buy the product. Because I want to be able it. to save money with this being banded together by than buying just two separate items. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the second thing I would think about is, is your customer. So you know, if you're working with Walmart, uh, does Walmart want to pack like that? Um, you know, how much space do they have on the shelf for it? So you need to really work with your customer to make sure that you're building the pack to you know, the spec that will actually work, uh, work at the shelf. Um, and then the third thing is, you know, internally you have to think about costs, uh, cost and capability. So, one, do you have the capability to produce a pack like that, or do you have maybe a, a third-party co-packer or partner that can help you out? Um, and then in terms of costs, clearly there's an investment there um, as well for your brand and your company, you know, with packaging materials and, and usually labor as well. Um, so, you know, you've got to look at that and consider, uh, consider that as well. So to me, you know, when I look at this as a shopper, I think, oh, this looks like, well, first of all, it's like salt and pepper being yep. uh, tied together. Pepper, they go together, mustard. right? Yep. Ketchup and mustard. Yeah. And this looks like it would be easy to accomplish. What were some of the lessons that you learned through this process that you would share with our viewers? Yeah. So, uh, plan as far ahead of time as you can. Don't rush. Uh, make sure you're, you know, like I said, that you're building your internal, you know, financial scenarios and then keep, uh, keep your customer in this case we kept you know Walmart um, kind of worked hand, hand in hand with them on making sure that what we were developing was also you know what close to what they were looking for um, you know space is, is a premium in Walmart so you're not going to get five facings of this at the shelf um, in this case you know we've got we've got one facing which we're very happy with and uh, it just went in uh, in store so we're hoping it does well I would imagine that your team probably got really excited, like, well, we can add this and we can layer this and we can do this and we can do that because, I mean, this to me is basic. You need this. Yep. Where did you all sort of put that line and say it's ketchup and mustard? Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, keep it mass. So uh, the more things you add, the more niche, the, the more niche you make it. So don't get you know selfish from a brand perspective and, and try and use that pack to to do something that maybe isn't right for the shopper, right for, for, the, for the customer. So again, stay focused on the shopper, stay focused on, on the customer, in this case, Walmart, um, and it should be a success. And keep it simple, it sounds like. Keep it simple, yeah. Don't add keep too many simple. things. The, the more things you add, the smaller your, your pool of consumers actually gets. So by only doing ketchup and mustard in this case, um, you know, we're, we're uh, probably catching 60 to 70% of households in the US. Great. Ryan, thank you for joining us again. Thanks for having me.
I know as you're looking at your P&Ls every week, one of the hardest numbers to grapple with is loss to theft. And one of the solutions more suppliers are turning to is source tagging merchandise. We're going to take a very deep dive into this with my next guest, who is Chief Customer Officer for Tyco Retail Solutions, Mr. Tony D'Onofrio. I'm so glad you're here, Tony. Welcome. Thank you very much. Really a great pleasure to be here. Let's start with the history a little bit. Tell me a little bit of the background behind source tagging merchandise. Well, source tagging has been around for a few years, but actually has taken off even more in the last, uh, for the last six years. And really the process is attacking a key problem of shrink. Retailers lose about $123 billion to shrink, 75% of which is to customers and employees. And the source tagging is really one of those key technologies that attacks the product at the source, at the product itself. So at the point of manufacture, we attack the solution by inserting a label. And we've been doing that very, very successfully. Over 60 billion products have been source protected over the years, and we had about 4 billion products per year. Now, for suppliers that are not familiar with the physical process, what goes into source tagging one of their products? Well, there's two types of source tagging. There is label source tagging. So at the point of manufacture, we insert a security label inside the product itself, and, and it's seamless to the product. It can go in the packaging. It can actually go inside the product itself at the point of manufacture. One of the hottest growing here has actually been in apparel. And in the apparel space, we actually attack a hard tag, attach a hard tag to the actual product, and it gets shipped to the shelf, to the store shelf ready to be installed. As you're working with clients, what are some of the big categories that we really need to pay attention to? It varies. Uh, for the hard goods retailer, it's typical uh, uh, products such as over-the-counter products such as razor blades. It's also color cosmetics. It's also things like ink cartridges, batteries, those types of things. But an unusual one that people don't think about is meat. We actually source protect meat and insert security labels and security uh, solutions into meat product, not in the in meat itself, actually <laughs> on the packaging. So you're not eating one of our labels, <laughs> but in the packaging. But it's a, it's a key solution to actually, again, attack the problem of shrink. You mentioned the labels there very briefly. And as I was reading about some of the source tagging, I saw that putting these labels on there to sort of deter the would-be shoplifters had some success. What have you seen? Well, actually, that's one of our layers of our entire solution. In the last several years, we've evolved into a service model. And this service model involves actually doing detailed analysis of the problems inside of stores in terms of shrink. And then through that analysis, coming up with metrics to measure how we're doing in terms of performance and making sure that the highest shrink items are well protected and optimized for the actual buying uh, for process for the consumer. The layer that you're describing in terms of the graphic and the packaging is an important layer because it reminds the consumer, yes, this is a nice product for you to buy, but you should not steal it because we are watching with our systems. And really quick, what are some of the success stories that you've seen from being able to source tag products for your clients? Uh, lots of great success stories from around the world, but really they're centered around three things, uh, which are sales typically goes up shrink goes down and we take our labor out of the store and we've seen anywhere from six percent to twenty percent sales uplift on certain products and anywhere from thirty percent to seventy percent down in terms of shrink on different products and these are we've done this in in lots of different stores around the world and through this metrics service model, we're actually able to measure and optimize and deliver these types of results. All right, Tony, so great to have you here. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And we'll be right back. Don't miss our new fun podcast, the 8th and Walton Conference Call. Packaging is fun. Well, not that kind of fun. But we can all agree package design is key to capturing a shopper's attention. With changing behaviors, brands now have to create packaging to draw interest on both the physical and the digital shelf. So when you're deciding what information to include in your designs, the value of insights about your shopper is on the rise. One package has to speak to audiences shopping in two completely different ways. Smart brands have already realized this and are going a step further by rethinking their entire approach, package design and size and even product design. And here's one more thing to consider. In store, you compete with your on-shelf neighbors for the shopper's attention, but online, the distraction is all but taken away. So. Whether you're reworking the packaging itself or how to highlight it on physical and digital shelves, Shopper Insights matter now more than ever in this new omni-channel world.
Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas is pleased to honor our scholarship recipients and supporters at the Spark of Hope with special guest speaker Barrett Baber. Through community support, we're creating better, brighter futures for determined single parent families. The Spark of Hope is sponsored in part by Pinnacle Foods, Listerine, Cox, KNWA, Cityscapes, and these fine local businesses. Visit Single Parent Scholarship Fund NWA.org for more information about how you can help ignite a spark of hope for single parent families in Carroll, Madison, and Washington counties. All Estel Attorneys at Law, with seven offices nationwide, including Northwest Arkansas, we are a full-service business law firm assisting clients with their corporate, employment, and real estate legal needs. For more information, visit hallestel.com. What if you created a town today? What would that town stand for? What matters and what would stand out? And where would you find this new town? Bentonville, Arkansas. Visit Bentonville, a new American town. Hey suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Eighth and Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at eighthandwalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700. You've seen our friend Kerry Bailey from Anasha on the show many times before. And when he found out we were doing a show about packaging, he was nice enough to invite us here to Menasha to look at some of the great packaging trends firsthand. Thank you for inviting us here, Kerry. Thanks, Jared, for coming over. We're really delighted to have you and the team here. Hey, before we go down to the big reveal room where all the magic happens, would you let us know what you're excited about as far as packaging now and kind of a sneak peek at what's coming this year? It's a great time in retail and packaging. Um, there probably hasn't been a point in history where we've put so much pressure on packaging to do the job that it needs to do to engage shoppers and perform and drive sales uh, that are really relevant to the performance of the packaging itself. So it's a wonderful time to be talking about packaging. All right, let's head down to the reveal room and see what Carrie's been working on. Okay, I just want everybody to know my friend Kerry Bailey made me take my jacket off to come into the Menasha Reveal Room because it's going to put me to work today, I'm afraid. This is the work session area back here, Jared. This is where we actually spend time and, and do the work. You can see by the white samples here and the area that this is where it happens. So uh, we're going to spend a little time looking at how that happens. Now, before we jump into a real demonstration that I'm looking forward to, I know a lot of suppliers, when they think retail-ready packaging, their mind kind of goes right to the old PDQs. How has this evolved from what we know as PDQs? Well, we don't want to forget the PDQ aspect of merchandising today, and that's the display footprint that's used. But really, our retail-ready packaging today and the role of packaging, as I mentioned earlier, the focus on packaging and the pressure to perform not only as a protector when products are moved and shipped and in the supply chain, but it has a secondary job to do, and that is when it gets to the shelf, it's got to be a merchandising display. And so really making that operationally friendly for associates is important, and then making sure that the message is conveyed to the shoppers just equally as important. Yeah, and part of that pressure is saving some payroll dollars as well, and I know that's what we're about to see right now. Let's jump right into it and see what you have going on. Yeah, so really today when you think about, uh, for instance, in this pasta category, a store associate might be looking at a case pack of 24 or 36 of some of these kinds of items. And if you think about it, they're standing in the, in the aisle and they're having to one-off these out of a case right. and carton to the shelf to actually achieve the merchandising that's going to occur. So we look at today and that innovation, we're thinking about how can we make that happen in a five second execution or at least make that more friendly and really perform in our retail ready packaging environment. So today I'm going to show you a little innovation here in a packaging environment. This is a, a package of this same type of product. Okay. And what we're shipping is we're shipping twice the case amount. And what we'd happens at retail is we get a good break of the carton. So now we have two units. Okay. So in our retail-ready packaging viewpoint today, where retail-ready packaging is more than a pack and a half, it's a two-pack strategy on shelf, we can put one pack back here behind, okay? And we can now activate this sleeve right here and make it ready for merchandising. And so we're going to remove the top, okay? And as we move the top, we can put the item on the shelf. And now the shopper has a very full view of the product, okay? and the associate's able to stock a lot more units to the shelf 
faster and more efficiently. And the shopper still has a full visual visibility of the product. Yeah. So now we're saving time. That's going to add to the payroll dollars, to the savings there. So that's fantastic. Operational savings. And that's what really retail ready packaging is about. Okay? It's saving time and money in the store. Okay. So, so let's keep talking. What else do we have going on? Well, when you talk about the pressure on packaging today, you know, one of the things that's got to do, again, as I mentioned earlier, is be the display vehicle for the sure. product. So we're seeing a lot of evolution of new materials uh, and new tactics in utilizing some more forward speaking and more interruptive type packaging so the shopper really gets grabbed in the aisle. Today, what I'm going to show you is just some example of some foil packaging. You know, it's really hard to walk down this aisle and not see that. Absolutely. And you're thinking about creating a gift pack for somebody in your family. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a tremendous opportunity to, to catch something that's really already ready to go. And then when you think about what goes inside, I'm going to go back and talk about that protect and deliver the, mm -hmm. deliver the product. You can see right here we have a vacuum formed insert. So this is all part of the packaging execution. And when you're thinking about the end game to the shopper, it's very important that the shopper know that everything's gonna be taken care of appropriately, but then displayed appropriately as well. So you really have a nice attractive package here. Yeah, so now you talk about that pressure on the packaging, not only saving payroll dollars, now it's doing a marketing job for that decision that's actually made at the shelf. Absolutely, and again, today that package has gotta do so many things. It's gotta communicate what it is, what that value is, what the value and almost per serving opportunity is to the to the customer and we try to get that all in the package itself we were talking about that a little bit before some of the numbers and the measurements that are now required on packaging can you speak to that a little bit well you think about all the metrics that are available to us today the metric to the shopper is, is it fast, friendly, and friction free? Mm -hmm. If you can execute a package and they can get it home, if it displays the product, if it protects it, if they can see what the value is and see what the ingredients are, that's a big thing today too, is transparency, right? Mm -hmm. So if they can see all of that, then the packaging's done its job. All right, really quickly, let's take a look at one more because I'm interested to find out what's new with the shampoo packaging. Well, we have a sustainability story. All of this value that we're providing today in the transition of packaging, you know, there are days gone by where we might have blister packed these two items together. We'd have used a lot of petroleum-based plastics, okay, to keep in, tom in common terms. Today, we're putting that in a nice, recyclable, forestry-friendly uh, paperboard carton, and we're conveying the value right to the shopper, buy two and save and we're giving them the window to see the bottles themselves, and we're presenting this bonus pack in an entirely different way. Right. Carrie, thank you so much for inviting us to the house today. It's been a great time. We'll be right back. Suppliers, get the latest retail news 24 seven at Walmart News Now. Self-care now includes food, household, and personal care products. Millennials in particular are focused on having a healthy lifestyle. Do your retail strategies match their needs? For solutions to grow your business, visit IRIWorldwide.com. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. All Estel Attorneys at Law, with seven offices nationwide, including Northwest Arkansas, we are a full-service business law firm assisting clients with their corporate, employment, and real estate legal needs. For more information, visit hallestel.com. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas is pleased to honor our scholarship recipients and supporters at the Spark of Hope with special guest speaker Barrett Paper. Through community support, we're creating better, brighter futures for determined single parent families. The Spark of Hope is sponsored in part by Pinnacle Foods, Listerine, Cox, KNWA, Cityscapes, and these fine local businesses. Visit Single Parent Scholarship Fund NWA.org for more information about how you can help ignite a spark of hope for single parents and families in Carroll, Madison, and Washington counties. Hey, suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Eighth and Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at eighthandwalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700.
This time last year, we were talking about how the labels were needing to change on packages that were going to Walmart for distribution. And this time, of course, we're talking about OTIF, on time in full. And so we want to just get an update on where we are in that process since it's launched in February. And with us today is Colby Beelan from KSTAC. Thank you for joining us again. Thanks for having me. Okay, on time in full coming from that label evolution. What was the purpose of that to where it is today with On Time In Full? So OTIF is really a flow initiative at Walmart. It's all about making the goods, the product, flow through the regional distribution network. So uh, this time last year we were talking about the labels. The label initiative needed to occur so OTIF is possible at Walmart. So the first evolution was getting the labels applied, which allows the product to flow through the DC. And then Walmart announced the change from supply chain reliability to OTIF going from a four-day window at 90% measured over a 13-week period to a one-day window measured at 95% in a four-week period. So uh, it truly is all about flow. So one day versus four weeks versus 13. What are you seeing in the change now that it's being launched and how suppliers are reacting to it? Well, the, the, the bigger suppliers have been on top of OTIF from, from the beginning, even when they announced it almost two years ago at YBM uh, 2016. Um, but the smaller to mid-sized companies still seem to not be as informed or have an understanding of the impact that OTIF is going to have to their business. So, I mean, we're, we're seeing more and more mid-sized companies taking their head out of the sand and, and trying to figure out a solution. But it is amazing to me how many small to mid-sized companies that we talk to that still don't even know what OTIF stands for. And so it sounds like from what you're sh saying is that even though there's a four week period of time, they really have to hone in, not just on one day, but really that four week period. Well, the, the, the unique difference between supply chain reliability and OTIF is 13 weeks with exceptions, now four weeks with no exceptions. Um, you know, one late DC per week, you're at 97%. Two late DCs per week, you're below 95%, which is the metric for OTIF. So two late DCs a week in the supply chain out of 42, fairly easy to, to not be able to comply with the 95%. Meaning they need to be very proactive. Absolutely. What is some of the latest information that you have learned in, which, uh, in a way in which suppliers are going to be measured? I think the most interesting one that I've got more information on recently is we always were under the assumption that the supplier would be measured at the nine-digit sequence number at Walmart, their vendor ID number. Um, we have learned that it's actually going to be all rolled up to the six-digit, and they're going to be measured at the six-digit level. So that master number is really critical in the process. It's going to have a big impact on their <laughs> OTIF number. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us, Colby. You bet. Thank you. Retail tainment is obviously an important topic to suppliers, bringing fun at that local level in a store. Today, we have John Vista with us again from Dean Foods. We're glad to have you with us again. Thank you. So what do you all do at re for retail tainment with your products? Uh, we try and capitalize on retail tainment as much as possible. The great thing about our portfolio is we have you know, healthy products like milk. We also have indulgent products like ice cream. So based on the event, usually we have an item we can play with. Uh, First and foremost, demos. We love to get our product in everybody's mouth. Uh, for ice everybody cream. loves having ice cream. <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> I've yet to find demo, any, I'm sure. <laughs> I've yet to find anybody say otherwise. Uh, but like for our Mayfield, for example, we have a sampling van that goes around to Walmart stores and also local events. You know, out in the community, Atlanta Braves games, for example, in Atlanta. And not only are we just handing out product, we're also trying to engage with the consumers. And so how do you go about engaging with them? Uh, well, a great example is so we have an iPad where as you're taking samples, you can pose with your friends and family, and then it gets immediately uploaded. It takes a picture with like a background, all that kind of stuff. Take, gets uploaded immediately to our Facebook page. Then you can go on your phone, tag it, share it with your friends. So basically taking that physical experience from the retail tainment event and trying to create a social experience online that you can share. Yeah, I'm sure people have fun doing that. Yeah. Everybody knows where you were. That <laughs> cert certainly helps amplify your brand. So then, obviously, you're in the community. You've got a truck that is providing providing demos probably in the parking lot there at a Walmart, but yep. you go to other events, yes? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, being that, you know, our regional brands, these are brands consumers grew up on. So uh, the communities have supported us, and we want to give back to those communities. A uh, great example is we sponsor a Music City run in Nashville. So 
lots of uh, right. fun dairy puns. <laughs> uh, where we have our van, we're giving out products, and uh, that benefits the Nashville public school system. So we do that throughout the country based on, you know, all sorts of events. And all of this is tied to your focus of, on corporate social responsibility. Yeah, our company purpose is strengthening lives through the goodness of dairy. So last year we gave away 1.1 million gallons of product to Feeding America and their subsequent food banks. Wow, so great stuff that y'all are accomplishing Thank for you. the communities that you serve with great products. And the products. communities that have supported us. <laughs> That's wonderful. John, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Don Harris. And as a viewer, what if I told you that almost four in 10 of you either had diabetes or pre-diabetes, and many of you might not even know it. It's a growing issue in this community and, and really across the country. And thank goodness we've got people like the American D Diabetes Association who are working on programs to improve that. And today we've got Mallory Mars, who's the director for Arkansas for the ADA. And we've got David Penny, who's a longtime Walmart associate and also on the board. And please, could you share with us, Mallory, what, what does the ADA do with the money it raises to, to confront this issue? Sure. So the money raised here helps towards advocacy, awareness, and education here locally and nationwide. Um, we also do programming, specifically uh, camp down in Little Rock, where we bring kids together so they can learn a little bit more about what it's like to have diabetes. While you can have a life with diabetes, it is a little bit of a burden, so we want those kids to know that it's okay to have diabetes, and we want them to meet kids that also have diabetes so they know that it's okay. Um, we are also partnering with Walmart. So here locally to do a national program. Um, we're spearheading with them um, for their Walmart Wellness Days. That will start on June 17th, where we'll be doing screenings with Quest Diagnostics. We'll be doing blood glucose screenings. We'll be doing BMI screenings and blood pressure screenings to hopefully mitigate the issues of diabetes that are out there. It's just the stuff we love on this, this segment of Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas, where business, nonprofit can come together and do something really good for the community. <laughs> it's good for business, and it's good for people. Uh, I'm I suppose that the issue with people not knowing is they just don't know their blood sugar numbers, right? In a lot of ways, yes. And so <laughs> this is right on the kind of stuff that business yes. can do together. It's just wonderful. And, and David, there's some bike event that's going to have a little change to it this year. You're the co-chair of that. Could, could you explain to us what, what's changing with the bike event? That's right. Thank you, Don. The Tour to Cure is an annual cycling event held by the American Diabetes Association. It uh, is a way for us to raise funds and bring awareness to the families that are impacted. And um, historically, it's been a road cycle event that's been uh, conducted at uh, our best ballpark in Springdale. And this year, we're relocating to Crystal Bridges, which gives us the opportunity to incorporate a mountain bike trail as well, right. which we get to kick off right here on our very own Razorback Greenway. And the event this year is going to happen on uh, August 19th, and we'd like to thank Tyson, our presenting sponsor, as well as Visit, Visit Bentonville. That is, um, this whole thing with biking with the Greenway, I've seen more bikers than ever. You're a biker yourself, so <laughs> right. being able to expand upon what's already happening in northwest Arkansas, that's really cool. It sounds like a really fun time if you're a biker. Can't miss event for a good cause. That's right. Right. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. We appreciate it. We appreciate the work the ADA is doing. It's a real issue that we need to confront. And we'll see you next time on The Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas. Connect with us online. Follow Ethan Walton on Facebook. Hey, suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Ethan Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at EthanWalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700. Our guests enjoy staying at the 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinner, meetings, and product launches there. Great conversation mm -hmm. specifically around packaging. Well, here was what was interesting to me is that we visit with Kobe Belan, who's giving us the OTIF update from K-Stack. There's so many suppliers who wish they could roll the clock yep. back and actually take this seriously yep. because these deadlines are kicking in in yep. August. But we got to visit with Carrie Bailey from Menasha. Here's the next big thing. It's retail ready packaging. And now is the time to think about your process. Now's the time to begin thinking about what do I need to do to kind of get in line with retail ready packaging. Plenty of time. Loved Ryan Schimmel saying, okay, so if you're thinking about redoing your packaging, you really should be thinking about what is the value, particularly say of a combo to that shopper? What's the value then, of course, to your 
to your client, to your customer, Walmart or Sam's Club, and then can you actually make it happen? Can you make that packaging you know, come to life. <laughs> and then everything else that we talked about with packaging is great to hear from Tony D'Onofrio on the security side. He's always a great conversation. We'll see you next time on Focus on Suppliers.